The following video is part of Manum's intermediate course. See the video description for more information. In this video, we will learn to make the following animation, which simulates a clipping mask that can be done in conventional video editors. I want to thank the user Killabrawl13, since he was the one who came up with this idea, but I modified the code to make it easier to understand. First, let's see the following scene. I have two objects, a square and a circle, and a group called slider, made up of two large squares and a line between both squares. So far, nothing interesting. However, if we use the big squares to get an intersection between each object, then we can give it a mask effect. For this, let's define a closure that will return a simple updater with this structure. We see that both the square and the circle are not added to the screen, so I have called them no added mob. The background is the corresponding large square and the added mob is these two beam objects that I have created below. Now, when you move the squares, then the intersection that was defined in this way will give us an interesting effect. To make everything clearer, I am going to redefine the names. The base object is related to the large pink square, and the target is related to the large maroon square. You must take into account that we are not transforming the objects, we are only applying an intersection with the moving backgrounds. And this holds even if we rotate the backgrounds. To make the effect more noticeable, we make the backgrounds transparent. However, this only works for objects that don't have sub-objects, that is, that are simple paths. If we try to do this with texts or with groups, it will not work. This is because the intersection class only works with individual paths, not groups. If we want this to work, we will have to apply the intersection with each sub-object. And voila, we see that it works. But now we face another problem. If we want to convert objects that may or may not have sub-objects to each other, then we will have to select the corresponding function, and that can be very cumbersome. In this example, I am using a group, which obviously has sub-m objects, and I want to convert it to a circle, which has no sub-m objects. I'm going to have to use the corresponding closure for each one. And, although it works, we still face a bigger problem. What if sub-objects also have sub-objects? For example, groups that contain other groups. Again, our function fails. The easiest way to solve this is to create a recursive function that returns all the sub-objects into one-dimensional v-group. In this way, we no longer have to worry about the number of sub-objects that an object can have. This solution isn't perfect, but it works for most cases. Now, you may be wondering why this video is in the alpha updaters chapter if we never use an alpha updater. 
Well, the reason is that, as an exercise, you are going to automate this whole process using alpha updaters. It's a complex exercise, and the solution will be uploaded to my YouTube channel in October, so you have plenty of time to think. Congratulations, you have completed the first chapter of the intermediate course. In the next video, we will use the knowledge obtained here to correctly create custom animations.